Good morning, everybody. Welcome to week number five. Yes, week number five of the semester and the first week of the NFL season. Hey, go Falcons tonight. Um, let's kick Philadelphia's butts, shall we? All right, well, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about this week's uh, agenda. So you've got to read two of the late poets, uh, Lord Byron, uh, also known as George Gordon, and uh, Percy Bysshe Shelley. These two guys are the late poets because they are still considered romantics, but they were kind of anti-Wordsworth, anti-Coleridge. They felt by the time that they were writing poetry, and by they I mean Shelley and uh, Byron, they felt like by the time they were writing poetry that Wordsworth and Coleridge had kind of forgotten what had made them such great poets and had become a part of the establishment. So these guys are the younger generation, and they are anti-establishment, which of course means they're anti-Wordsworth and anti-Coleridge. Uh, so, what does that mean for our readings? It means we're still going to see romantic elements in their poetry, but we're going to see some differences. And that's what this week's discussion question is about, is what are some of the similarities between uh, Shelley and Byron uh, when compared to Wordsworth and Goldridge? And then what are some of the differences uh, that made them a little bit different? So, um, look at those uh, similarities and differences in this week's posting as it's kind of a compare-contrast assignment like you've had uh, in maybe your English 1101 class. So, um, look at the slideshows. Now, you will see there's poems in there in the slideshows that I did not assign to you. That's because I've kind of reduced the reading load. That's why your test is going to have an, a weird number of questions as well. It's because I've reduced the reading load. So, that means fewer questions on the test. And let's talk about that test. If you go in the quizzes, so if you go into the D2L homepage, uh, click the quizzes at the top of that page, you'll see the Romanticism essay, or exam, excuse me. Um, that Romanticism exam will be uh, uh, multiple choice, and it'll be 42 questions, I believe. I reduced it from 50 to 42. There will be two sections. One is general knowledge, and this is, you know, knowing what Romanticism is, knowing what caused the French Revolution, knowing uh, what some of the major players' names are and things like that. Then there will be a direct quote section. Um, there should be some quotes in there. Remember, this is an open book test. You know, you only have two hours to complete it. But because it's open book, there should be some key words or some key phrases or key sentences in some of these quotes that you can say, oh, wait, I've seen this before. So, for example, um, when we talk about uh, you must have an aversion to reason, uh, clearly that's going to be Wollstonecraft because she's telling Burke this. Um, uh, and for example, uh, a poet is a man of uh, a man speaking to men in the common language and the powerful overflow of emotion. That would clearly be what? Um, if you came up with Wordsworth's preface, then you'd be correct. So these direct quotes, they're kind of lengthy because somewhere in those lengthy ones, you can figure out, oh, wait a minute, I saw this when I read this author. I saw that when I read that author. And so then you can get at the right answer. And again, it's open book. I'm not going to come to your house and make sure you're not uh, looking in the book. Uh, i got better things to do with my time than to uh, visit you while you're taking a test. So um, go ahead and uh, use that to your advantage as well. Um, so that's it for this week. Uh, you got a little bit of work ahead of you, but it's only one posting question instead of two like last week. Um, on those posting questions, I am uh, almost done with week one, grading week one, which has put me a little bit behind. Uh, things outside of uh, class have put me behind. But I am not real pleased with the quality of these first week's postings. Um, I'm making lots of comments. In fact, this is why I'm not finished yet. It's because I'm finished so many time, so much time having to make comments on those readings. I think one student so far has gotten an A, and everybody else has been below that. So um, read those comments. Apply those comments to your future postings. Um, what I will probably do once I get done re grading the first two weeks postings is go ahead and uh, allow you to resubmit, which I shouldn't have to do because I gave you instructions on the uh, how to do these postings. And I talked about them a little bit in the videos. And yet still, some of you didn't include any direct quotes or some of you uh, did not use specific details. You used vague words like things and things like that. Uh, some of you uh, have a lot of grammatical errors. Um, uh, there's a there's some postings I read and I was wondering how the student even got out of English 1101. Uh, you know, just because these are discussion postings does not mean you can write in text message and it does not mean you can write in fragments and things like that. 
Um, quotations formatting. Some of you uh, still don't know how to cite properly, even though you had research papers in English 1101 and 1102. So, um, so look at my comments before you make another posting. And if I haven't graded your posting yet, I'm getting to it. Um, it again, it's taking me a long time because I have to make so many comments on these. Um, and then once I get through the first two weeks postings, I may not comment at all after that, or I may make a couple of sentences at best, and then I'll give you numbers. So that's where we stand on the postings. I'm getting through them, I'm working through them, and hopefully I'll have them done within the next couple of days or so, at least week one within the next couple of days or so. And then week two, I'll get started on that. So those are my comments for this week. I hope that uh, you enjoy Byron, and I hope that you enjoy Shelly. And uh, good luck on the test. It's not, it shouldn't be that hard if you've been keeping up and doing the work. Uh, the test will shut off at midnight next Sunday, which is the 20th. So when, on the 20th, when the clock strikes midnight and turns into the 21st, that test will shut down, and I will not reopen it for anybody that didn't take it. So please, please, please take that test um, on time. And all, that's all I have. So I wish you a good week and happy reading, and we'll see you again next week.